the moon disk is perfectly, not more and not less, covering the disk of our sun. The moon orbits the Earth and it always faces the Earth the same way. The moon actually really balances out the Earth's weather and everything else. A lot of people don't know that. During an eclipse, the disk of the moon is transiting the disk of the sun. And during the complete eclipse, On July 29, 1953, John O'Neill, science editor for the New York Tribune, discovered a 12-mile-long bridge in the area on the moon known as Mare Crisium. He contacted the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers with this finding. While O'Neill said in public it was a natural phenomena, the fact that it just suddenly appeared called into question whether the bridge was artificial. As soon as he announced this discovery, O'Neill was attacked by skeptical scientists. That was until famed British astronomer H.P. Wilkins confirmed that he too had seen the mysterious bridge. Later, astronomer Patrick Moore also reported seeing the structure. What is very odd about this strange story is that the bridge slowly began to disappear as if it were morphing into the surface of the moon. Now today, there is no trace of what these famous astronomers saw. In the 1960s, NASA compiled a list of strange sightings on the moon as seen by reputable astronomers going back to the dawn of the telescope called a Chronological Catalog of Lunar Events. The report reveals hundreds of strange objects moving on the surface with odd light seen in the dark of the moon and even clouds and mists streaming across its exterior. Our nearest neighbor in space, the Moon, has long baffled scientists. When considered, it is truly one of the more enigmatic members of our solar system. These oddities include the fact that the Moon and the Earth are the largest planet-Moon system in the solar system, the Moon being about one quarter the size of the Earth. The Moon has an odd orbit, which means that the same side of the Moon is always facing Earth. Three feet per second, 40 feet. No one but the astronauts have actually ever seen the far side of the moon with their own eyes. It also, interestingly enough, has a tidal lock with the Earth. The moon orbits the Earth and it always faces the Earth the same way. Now, you may not have thought about this before, but what's one of the interesting things that happens with that? You could always do things on the back side of the moon. You could do very elaborate construction projects. You could have very bright things going on. All these bright buildings, highways, roads, it could look like Manhattan. There could be all these ships coming and going, and you would never see it because you only see one side facing the Earth. Perhaps one of the oddest coincidences is the strange fact that the Moon and the Sun, from the perspective of the Earth, appear to be the same size. That's because the Moon is one four hundredth the size of the Sun and is exactly one four hundredth the distance between the Earth and the Sun. This is what gives us solar eclipses, where we can see this incredible coincidence for ourselves. Not only does it rotate in such a way as to always keep one face to the Earth, which is unusual enough, but possibly explained, but even stranger still is that when the Moon eclipses the disk of the Sun and transits it, it's a perfect eclipse. The, our moon is of such a size and distance from the Earth that during an eclipse, the disk of the moon is transiting the disk of the sun. And during the complete eclipse, the moon disk is perfectly, not more and not less, covering the disk of our sun. Now that our moon is arbitrarily in that orbit to not more or not less eclipse the sun, but to perfectly eclipse the sun, would suggest that our moon is, is actually in an artificial orbit around our planet. Because to just capture some moon or, or even that it, it would just form, you know, as the planet forms in that orbit and that size, the odds are a zillion to one. There are some very strange anomalies about the moon's orbit that are undeniable. And one of them is that the apparent diameter of the moon 
and the apparent diameter of our sun from Earth is almost precisely the same. And you might say, well, that's not a big deal, but the interesting point is that it causes this corona phenomenon to occur when we have a total solar eclipse. You see this perfect ring of light around the moon. Now, what are the likelihoods that that could be strictly a function of chance? It seems very, very small. The moon, I believe, is tidal locked in orbit, which, by the way, is very rare in our solar system, number one. Uh, proves to me intelligent placement. And I think for two reasons. The first reason being, in order to sustain life on this planet in a way that makes it extremely comfortable for sentient beings like ourselves, you need to have a stabilizer to keep the Earth from rocking on its axis, number one, because you would have severe storms, severe wind gusts in different places, tides would run up into the land and destroy property and so forth. The moon actually really balances out the Earth's weather and everything else. A lot of people don't know that. The second, I think, and most important reason is because when you're tidally locked, what happens is you, the, the moon, from our perspective on Earth, you only see one side of the face and it rotates at the same speed as Earth is rotating, so we only get to see that same side. So what it allows is for clandestine operations on the, what they call the dark side of the moon, which really is not dark. We call it dark because it's on the far side that we can't see, but technically, because the moon has its own rotation on its, on its own axis, all sides of the moon actually see the sun. So there really is no dark side of the moon, but the far side of the moon is where potentially there is clandestine operations, maybe even ancient bases, maybe even now current bases there that are now kept away from uh, human uh, eyes here on Earth. The moon and the Earth are a weird system because they're, they're so close in size. And so it's really rare for a body as small as the Earth with as minimal a gravitational field as it has to be able to actually lock a body like that into a tidal lock arrangement. It's very easy for Saturn and Jupiter, which are much more massive, to be able to maybe grab an object or even, even fishing off a, a moon and keep it in a tidal locked relationship. So I wonder when I see that if maybe it w wasn't moved in place and the Earth actually sort of robbed it of its spin momentum at some point to the point that it now shows only one side of itself to the Earth. But it doesn't seem like an arrangement that could have come about naturally. It just doesn't really add up. Scientists cannot agree on the origins of the moon. There are several theories, but none of them adequately explains everything concerning the moon. The first is the fission theory which says that a chunk of the Earth broke off and condensed into the Moon. The problem with this theory is that it does not explain the 4,000 degree baking that the Moon's surface endured at some point in its past. If the Moon had formed nearby the Earth, then our planet would have gone through this baking heat also, but there's no evidence for this on Earth. The second theory is the capture theory, in which the Earth somehow captured the Moon as it was whizzing by the problem with this theory is that it's unlikely, because it would have had to happen in a very exact way, otherwise the moon would have crashed into the Earth. The third theory is the condensation theory, that says the Earth and the moon condensed at the same time from material in the solar system. The problem with this theory is that, if it were true, the moon would be as dense as the Earth. The fourth and most recent theory is that a planet like Mars crashed into the Earth, breaking off a chunk, which then reformed into the Moon. The problem here is that the isotopes for the Earth and the Moon are identical. This would not be the case if a planet had crashed into the Earth. So science is left in a quandary considering how the Moon was created and how it arrived here. The biggest concern was the fact that the Moon's density is far less than that of Earth. Though the Moon is a little less than a third the size of the Earth, it weighs far less. The Earth is 81 times heavier than the Moon. It is this fact that baffles scientists the most. Of course, there are several different theories about how the Moon was formed. One of them is that the Earth was hit by a Mars-sized object and all this stuff went out and gathered together at this particular orbit and then started circling around the Earth. But the bottom line is, if you actually look at the data, you can see that the Moon is actually receding from the Earth, indicating that it may have actually been fissioned off by the Earth at one point. And the fact is that right now, there's no really good theories for how the Moon got there. We know the capture theory doesn't work. The fission theory has some issues, although it's my favorite. And the collision theory is just absolute nonsense because of the fact that the isotopic ratios of the lunar soil that we brought back, the, the elements in it, um, you know, they, they match the Earth. That indicates that they're not from somewhere else. You'd have a mixture 
if the moon was actually formed from the Earth itself and another alien body. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.